Greetings. This is the weekly Liberal Mancy reading for Monday, January 8th, 2018. Ugh. Itchy nose. Okay. Now, you guys <coughs> may not have heard of Liberal Mancy, so let me give you a quick definition. Okay. According to Wikipedia, Libromancy is also known as Bibliomancy. And there's a. I, read, I found another source that said that it's also called Stickomancy. S T I C H O M A N C Y. <clears throat> it is the use of books in divination. The method of employing sacred books, especially specific words and verses, for quote-unquote magical medicine, for removing negative entities, or for divination in widespread, it, uh, is widespread in many religions in the world. Um, what we are doing here, this is the method that I'm using for the bibliomancy. I consult my spirit guides and then I am led to any number of books uh, generally from one to five and then I look through those books well let me take that back I actually don't look through those books I close my eyes and then I ask spirit to guide me to the page that has the most uh, relevant message to what I'm asking about for the weekly readings, I'm asking, what do the people need to know for this week coming ahead? So I open the books. You know, I, I go like this, and I'm asking myself, is this it? And the spirit goes, no. And I say, is this it? And the spirit goes, no. And then finally says, spirit says, here. And so then I open the book there. And at that point, <clears throat> then I say, Okay, guide my hand to where the relevant information is. And then I'll feel like a, a, magnet, a magnetic feeling, and then my hand will be pulled down to the information. And I'll open my eyes, and I'll look, and I'll say, oh, okay, there's a word I landed on. What's that word? And then I'll write that word down so that I know where to start. And then I'll say, okay, spirit, tell me, show me where to stop reading and then okay they'll say here and then I'll write that word down and then I'll copy all the text that's in between and including those words then I'll go to the next book and do the same thing and so on and so forth uh, by the time I'm done I will have the information needed to do an accurate reading for the week so the theme for this week is by and large integration. What is integration? Integration in this sense is reclaiming those lost parts, concepts, feelings, and uh, parts of our soul, uh, what shamans call soul retrieval. Reclaiming those parts of us that we've lost in the past. There's, a, there's an author and shaman let's see her name is sandra ingerman i-n-g-e-r-m-a-n -E and if you go to sandra ingerman.com slash soul retrieval there's lots of good information there on what is shamanism uh, what is soul retrieval etc <clears throat> here's a couple quotes that i thought would be relevant to help explain these concepts a little easier for the uh, the layperson and the person who's new to these ideas. So what is shaman? The word shaman comes, this is a quote, the word shaman comes from the Tungus tribe in Siberia and means one who sees in the dark. How interesting. One who sees in the dark. Shamanism has been practiced in parts of Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia, Greenland, and of course, native North and South America, which is probably where most of you who have heard the word shaman have had it associated with, with Native American tribes 
and um, uh, tribes in South America around the Amazon basin, etc. <clears throat> However, what this is telling us is that the whole concept of a shaman comes from the, um, you know, what you might also call witch doctors, etc. But uh, the early, I guess we'd say priests, the one who had clear communication it within the tribe, right? Not in a big city or anything, but we're, we're just talking in little tribal situations where you have your group. Essentially, it's your family and everybody who lives around you. Because those are the people who you know, you know, you can trust, you can count on, who have your back, who understand you, etc. Your, your tribe. <clears throat> um, and Siberia, as we all know, as well, a lot of us know, is in essentially northern Russia, near the Arctic Circle. Uh, but it also stretches over... It, and has some relation to the Vikings, and it has some relation to the Chinese and the Mongols and the Huns uh, from the Asian continent. How interesting. So, she goes on to say, A shaman is a man or woman who interacts directly with spirits to address the spiritual aspects of illness, perform soul retrievals, divine information, help the spirits of deceased people cross over, and perform a variety of ceremonies for the community. Shamans have taken on many roles in tribal communities. They have acted as healers, doctors, priests, psychotherapists, mystics, and storytellers. And that accurately describes what I do here on this channel. Um, although, as I've said uh, before, I'm not a doctor. and. Uh, if I'm being fully authentic, I'm not a healer either. Now, we use that term, healer, just as we use psychic, because it's something that's familiar to people, and that's what they'll be looking for when they're searching, um, you know, online or in phone books or whatever. Uh, then when they find us, because we used one of those key words, we can say, well, we're actually a little bit more this nuance of that concept. And so, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not a healer. What I am is a shaman. What that means is I know the tools and techniques and technology to use to help your body heal itself. There's only two healers in the universe. One is your body, everybody's body. The body heals itself. The other healer is God, which is you know can be known by many names. Um, God, the universe, uh, spirit, uh, what have you, Allah. By the way, isn't it interesting to note that the word for God in uh, Arabic, Allah, has the word all in it? Think about that one. We'll address that in another video down the line. So for now, uh, let's go to soul retrieval. What is soul retrieval? According to Sandra Ingerman, here's a quote, uh, it is believed that whenever we suffer an emotional or physical trauma, a part of our soul flees the body in order to survive the experience. The definition of soul that I am using is soul in our essence, life force, the part of our vitality that keeps us alive and thriving. The types of trauma that could cause soul loss in our culture would be any kind of abuse, sexual, physical, or emotional. Other causes could be an accident, being in war, being a victim of a terrorist act, acting against our morals, 
So if we do something that's inauthentic, you know, if we, let's say the group wants us to help murder somebody uh, because they think that that person deserves murdering, but we don't believe in murder, or we think that person deserves a fair trial, you know, as in a lynching or something like that, or in the ancient, ancient times, a stoning, uh, mob justice, in other words. This is just one example. This would be an example where if you go along with it and you do it even though you feel like it's the wrong thing to do, that can cause you severe trauma and affect the rest of your life in negative ways. This is what we mean by acting against our morals. Uh, being in a natural disaster, sorry, that was my little comment. I should, uh, I should just read the quote and then comment on it so that it's clear. Uh, being in a natural disaster, a fire, hurricane, earthquake, tornado, etc., surgery, addictions, divorce, or death of a loved one. Any event that causes shock could cause soul loss. And what might cause soul loss in one person might not cause soul loss in another. It is important to understand that soul loss is a good thing that happens to us. It is how we survive pain. If I was going to be in a head-on car collision, the last place I would want to be at the point of impact is in my body. My psyche could not endure that kind of pain. So our psyches have the brilliant self-protect mechanism where a part of our essence or soul leaves the body so that we do not feel the full impact of the pain. In psychology, we call this disassociation. But in psychology, we don't talk about what dissociates and where that part goes. In shamanism, we understand that a piece of the soul leaves the body and goes to a territory in what shamans call non-ordinary reality, where it waits until someone intervenes in the spiritual realms and facilitates its return." End quote. How interesting. So, when I talk about integration for the week, what we're talking about is going deep within yourself and your past. It could be past lives. It could be your current life in the past. So, like when you were a kid or when you had your first heartbreak, when you're, you know, maybe you were set to get married and then you were left at the altar or something like that. Um, I know that... I'm feeling like that'll be true for some of you out there uh, that this will resonate with. Um, a lot of you, it's going to be, especially those who are watching this video right now, it's going to be sexual abuse as a child. Uh, it's unfortunate, but this is a very common experience. Um, I'm not going to get into the political or uh, right and wrong moral aspects of that, but we'll just comment on that is one of the things that causes trauma in a lot of people. Another thing that causes trauma is growing up in a society or group or tribe um, or family where you're taught one thing and then eventually you learn that that's entirely incorrect. Uh, or in other words, it do, that's not something that resonates with you anymore. For instance, um, those that grow up in a family that's you know racist. And then they come to a realization later on in life that, wait, this racism is just based out of fear. Fear that somebody else is getting something that is taking away from what I'm able to get. When really that's nonsense because you can have whatever you want as long as you ask for it from spirit. So enough about that we've done some vocabulary now let's move on to the actual reading so for this week um, there were two books that I want to tell you about that I did a reading from I actually did a reading from four books but two of them were books were my own personal journals 
my own writings. So those wouldn't count. Or, or in other words, I'm not going to share my personal journals with you guys. It's, it's just not going to happen. Not at this point. Maybe somewhere down the line. Um, but the first book is Gaia's Garden. This is popular with people who study permaculture, um, which is, you know, basically learning to farm and grow your own edible uh, plants, your edible, basically making an edible yard um, in a way that complements and works with nature. The author is Toby Hemingway. So, and also keep in mind, here's a, a little disclaimer. Just because I reference a book doesn't mean that I recommend the book. If I'm recommending a book, I'll say I highly recommend this book. Go check it out. This is one that I highly recommend. It's got lots of good information if you're, if you uh, want to learn self-sustainability and uh, growing your own food in, in small spaces. And if you can do it in small spaces, you can definitely do it in bigger spaces. So enough about that. In the book, Spirit led me to page 140. Um, and here's the here's the um, the passage. Let's call it a passage. Here's the passage that I was led to. And it wasn't all the way to the end to a period. So weeds, this is a quote, weeds can also tell the gardener about soil conditions. Some weeds, such as curly dock and horsetail, grow in ground too moist for fruit trees, eastern bracken and silvery sink foil. And there was more to the sentence, but spirit told me, nope, end right there. So that's what I did. So let's talk about that. What that led me to was this understanding. A gardener who's trying to do permaculture generally wants to avoid weeds and wants to propagate and cultivate more and more fruit because the fruit is actually representative of our nutrition. So in this case, fruit is our nutrition. Our food, which is our bodily nutrition, um, our water, our spiritual nutrition, which is um, th basically the good things that we do that make us feel good, uh, that balance things out. Honoring ourself, honoring others, um, doing generous things without worrying about being uh, repaid, you know. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong in and of getting payment for things. I'm not saying that. But I'm, I'm talking about these are the types of things, the pay it forwards and stuff like that, that make us feel good, right, when we do something good for somebody. Another example, and this is going to resonate for some of you out there, is going to be realizing that tough love is the best thing you can do for somebody. You may have had to kick your son out or your daughter uh, because they were essentially mooching and being lazy and not being productive and going forward in the world to create their own reality and their own truth and their own essential um, contribution to society as a whole. And instead, they're living in your basement playing video games or, you know, living at home until they can find a man to marry or something. And you may have had to say to yourself, I hate to be the bad guy, but they're really, they're really messing up my situation. You know, you've come to this point in your life where you've done what you need to do. Um, to raise them and to get them to where they can go out into the world and instead of going out into the world here they are back in your house again what does that do for you well a part of you may want them back in your house because maybe with them gone you feel like you have no purpose anymore because you have always defined yourself as either the mom or the wife or you know the worker or whatever and then when you leave those situations of being mom or wife or employee now you no longer have a way to define yourself this is actually a really great thing 
this is the point in your life where you can look. Um, Spirit is now telling me to mention Jupiter and Saturn for some reason. And it's interesting because a lot of the plants that were listed as weeds have been referenced um, in my research that I did because I didn't know anything about these weeds, these plants, until I looked them up. Um, they have spiritual associations, planetary associations to Jupiter and Saturn. So that makes a lot of sense. And there's something called the Saturn Return, which, um, you know, if you see this on Facebook, you'll see my page is listed under astrology and psychics. Well, I'm not an astrologer. Um, I, would, I would qualify as a psychic because I do communicate through the psychic realms. Um, okay, you could say I'm an amateur astrologer. I'm not an expert, and I've just started learning stuff. But there's something that I keep hearing from the astrologers that I listen to, like David Palmer, called the Saturn Return. And uh, I don't really know what it is, but maybe some of you will have an opportunity to hear this Saturn Return, and it will jolt something in you, and you'll go look it up. Right now, it's not the time for me to look it up. Um, but I just mentioned that because Spirit is telling me I need to share that with somebody out there. So there's a... Let's get, let's get into the weeds. So weeds are actually, a lot of times, medicine. And people just don't realize this. They put these toxic chemicals out and poison their lawn to have nothing but grass. And grass doesn't do anything but sit there and look like a carpet. Weeds, on the other hand, which as I said are usually herbs and medicine, can be used for all kinds of stuff, usually healing. And in fact, a lot of times, if you're sick, the weeds in your yard are what spirit put there to help you heal. We just have lost this natural connection that we used to have millions and millions and even billions of years ago as the human species to spirit. Again, that's what shaman does, and that's what I'm here for, is to help those who have severely lost their connection to spirit to connect and retrieve their messages. And I do personal readings um, through my Facebook page. You can go check that out at uh, Light Wolf Shamanic Healing. You can just put an at sign in front of it. It's all one word. Uh, go in Facebook, type at Light Wolf Shamanic Healing, enter, and then my stuff will come up. But let's continue on with the reading. Okay. So let's talk about these weeds, um, which could also be called herbs. So curly dock. So I looked up curly dock, and I thought it was really interesting. Well, let's talk about what the weeds are. So let's get back to... Um, the general concept of weeds. For the gardener, for somebody who wants everything in his yard to be, his or her yard to be fruit um, or vegetables or, or, you know, weeds are something that can be an annoyance. It's something that's unwanted. And the difference between weeds and plants is like the difference, this came to me last night when I was trying to sleep. The difference between weeds and plants is like the difference between noise and sound. It's only noise if it's bothering you. It's only weeds if it's bothering you. Another example would be the difference between harassment and courting. It's only sexual harassment if it's bothering you. <laughs> so so it's, it's, a lot of it is in the eye of the beholder. So how are you beholding this week? How are you seeing and observing your actions and the actions and behaviors of your environment and the people around you. This is what Spirit is asking you to look at this week, to observe, to behold, and to look. And um, in psychology, there's a term called reframing, to reframe what you're seeing around you and how people are behaving towards you. When, if somebody's being mean to you, Ask yourself, you know, yeah, you may say, oh, that person's a dick. That person's an asshole. Now, I've already told you guys, uh, this is not a channel for children. 
Though if you're a parent and you want to share this with your child, by all means, that's parental guidance. I, I have no problem with that. And uh, this, can, this information can help a lot of children, but I'm not, draw, I'm not trying to draw children to me because this is, uh, this is the parent's job, actually. I'm trying to draw parents to me. And people who may not be uh, parents of actual children, but people who are teachers, people who are educators, people who are storytellers, people who are essentially shamans and don't know it and are lost and need help. This is one of the main audiences that I'm attracting uh, to this channel out there. Uh, okay. So, in a nutshell, weeds are only bad if you view them as bad. But if you understand what their purpose is, then you can integrate them into your, into your garden. And what is your garden? Your garden is your life. Your garden is your mission. Your garden is your, your path in this world at this time. That is your garden. Your garden will still be here when you leave. It's your legacy. When you leave, what, what will you leave behind? What will your legacy be? What will be the fruits and the herbs that you have left? And how have you taught your children and those who come after you and those who you teach? How will you have taught them to cultivate and to understand how to use the weeds? So here are the weeds that we're dealing with this week. They're curly dock. Curly dock is really interesting. It's also called yellow dock. Um, my research has shown that it was used by Native American tribes to deepen the discernment between the spiritual and physical realms. Like they, um, they would, according to my understanding, they would sometimes like burn it or steam it or something in front of a sweat lodge before you go in so that you are more in tune to the spiritual uh, reality. And if I'm understanding this correctly, so that you could discern the difference between what spirit was trying to teach you and what was really happening. In other words, so you wouldn't have a psychotic break and murder somebody because you thought you were seeing a demon and it was really your friend Bob. <laughs> or Watakawe, or whoever your friend's name would be. And P.S. I don't know what Watakawe is. That just came to me. So maybe that's a real Native American name. If it is, somebody leave a comment down there and let me know. And if you know what it means, let me know that too. I appreciate it. That'll that will help me in in my learning and understanding. More about Curly Doc. Curly Doc strengthens the solar plexus which if you study the, the seven chakras, no, there's a video for another time. There's lots of information about there being other chakras, but for those who are new to chakras as a, as a concept, it's good to understand the seven primary chakras. And the solar plexus is always pictured usually as a yellow, sort of like the sun. That's why it's called your solar plexus. So it's in the middle right here. And if somebody punches the, you there, that place is, uh, there's an organ called the jejunum. And you will get really sick because this is where a lot of your power comes from. Um, <clears throat> that's as much as I want to say on that right now. So it strengthens the solar plexus. It helps with root work. So interesting. Even though the solar plexus is up here, and this is where power and will and that kind of stuff is emanates from, when you punch in karate or any martial arts, you're usually focusing from the solar plexus to uh, somebody else's solar plexus. Um, uh, willpower and the assimilation of life's experiences. Once again, this is an herb that can be used to cultivate integration. So. What are we talking about this week? Integration. Integrating those lost parts of us. Soul retrieval. This is a key concept. Bringing those lost parts back. So I'm just going to say it. Some of you out there were raped as a child. 
Some of you were raped in prison. Yes, some of you were in prison and are watching this now. And we're like, I didn't have nothing bad happen to me as a child. But later in life, all this bad shit started happening. I'm talking to you. If you don't deal with these things, they fester. They become like an infection under the surface. You cannot heal if you don't allow the feelings to process. Maybe you've had, here's one that's going to apply to a lot of you. You've had spiritual experiences. Maybe you saw your dead grandma's ghost or something like that. Maybe, <laughs> okay, this is funny. For some of, someone out there, maybe multiple people, maybe just one person, they're telling me I need to share this. Someone out there, it's two sisters, and your mother died and left one of you a necklace or something, and it got all mixed up. And one of you who was supposed to get the necklace didn't end up getting the necklace, either because the lawyer divided it out differently or something. Maybe the will, uh, they used an old will, and uh, the last will never got signed. And then you're, what I'm seeing is like, the one who felt, you know, betrayed, like she lost out because she was supposed to get the necklace. The mother actually came to her in a dream or uh, in some kind of spiritual communication and told her that, yes, she, you know, she was supposed to get the necklace. And... And that has given you resentment that has festered against your family and your sister and, and even your mother. And you try to tell people, that, and one, they won't believe you because it sounds like you're greedy and you just want it yourself. And that's why you're saying that you're just making it up. But really, you're not. Even though you do want it, you feel that you're entitled to it because your mother told you. It would be yours. It was like essentially your birthright. I'm feeling that for this person, this has caused a lot of trauma, especially since nobody believes you that you talk to your dead mother and that she told you this. <laughs> Now's the time to release. What you do is you release these feelings of resentment and then you reintegrate the people that you have written out of your life or that you have exiled from your life essentially or not or and feelings that you have exiled from your life so for instance maybe you were a caring person once but something happened to you and because of that you decided to harden your heart and shut down and put up a wall and not let love in Now is the time to let love in. Spirit is guiding me to do this prayer. Please join me for this prayer if you would. If, you, if this resonates with you in any way. If you feel a tear coming down your face. If it's coming from within inside you. If you're feeling a vibration. Join me in this prayer to help the integration. Heavenly Father. Mother, God, universe, all that is, great spirit. We call on the compassionate helping spirits to surround us in a circle of love and light. Protect us from those who would do us harm and any undue influences that would disable us from reaching the message that we need to receive right now. We thank you for the love that you give us. And we thank you for watching over us and guiding us each day. Even though we may not recognize or understand the proof and the evidence of your presence in our lives and our world. We thank you for guiding us 
to make decisions from the heart and from our intuition rather than solely from logic and mind. We thank you for teaching us the concept of faith and the beauty of how faith is rewarded. We thank you for teaching us that faith is the opposite of fear and that to not fear is simply to have faith and understanding. We thank you for helping us to recover any soul shards, any pieces, any morsels, any fragments of our former selves that we need at this time. We thank you for helping us to facilitate this. And now, this prayer I offer to my soul. I, and then state your name, call to all the parts of me that have been lost or that have been put away or that have been set aside to come into my soul and like lost puzzle pieces in a jigsaw puzzle to once again reassemble so that my soul can be whole again I so that I can have the most fully full healing so that my body can heal itself and so that I can have closure on hurts pains, traumas, and agonies in my life. I affirm that I am a being of love, that I give love, and that I am open to receiving love. I affirm that I have boundaries and I do not allow people or entities to suck my soul energy anymore. I affirm my boundaries are made so that I can love myself, but rather than walls that are solid, they are walls with doors and windows. And I affirm that I choose to open windows or close windows and doors in my own system of boundaries. I choose who comes in and who um, doesn't. I choose what behaviors I will accept towards me and what I won't. I affirm and understand that I cannot change other people. All I can change is how I perceive, how I observe, what other people do. As a being of love, I honor love and I commit henceforward, having received all my soul shards back that I can manage at this moment or something better, I commit to sharing love in all its forms with everybody I meet and in this way become an embodiment of true unconditional love. Thank you, we love you and so it is, blessed be. Ah, well, you may have seen the introduction video, 
This is the second, only the second video I've made for this channel. I was not aware that we were going to do a prayer. Spirit just dropped that on me. So apparently some of you out there needed that. Um, I will try to make a note. Um, if you guys want me to make this prayer a separate video that you can share with people, let me know and I'll do that. Um, but let's, let's get back to Curly Doc. We'll wrap that up real quick. Other benefits of Curly Doc is it balances digestive issues in the colon. Um, it's seen as a lucky herb to draw in money, success, business, and sometimes even love, although that's not the main focus. Uh, great for any business owner or anyone embarking on new business adventure. So those of you out there who are starting up a new business, who maybe have been guided by spirit, and you know that your, your role is to start a business and start using your spiritual talents, and you finally coming out of this phase where you were afraid to try to make money from your spiritual gifts, and now you realize, hey, all our gifts are spiritual. You know, Michael Jordan plays basketball with his spiritual gifts. Uh, why can't we make money with with our spiritual gifts. That's that's what it's here for. It's like the quintessential asking God for, you know, the guy falls in the ocean or whatever off of a ship and he prays to God for help and uh, the ship captain instantly, uh, somebody throws him uh, a lifesaver, you know, one of those circle things that are floaties and has a rope on it and says, here, grab, I'll, we'll pull you in. And he says, no, no, I prayed to God for help. I'm waiting for God. And they say, are, are you sure? And he says, yes. And so they leave. And then, uh, you know, this happens a couple more times. A helicopter ends up coming in some versions. Anyway, after so many times, he eventually drowns and then goes to heaven. And then he gets his chance in front of God. Um, now, I'm not saying this is what heaven is or what God is, but this is the joke. <laughs> he gets his, uh, his moment to uh, talk to God face to face, and uh, God says, how are you liking it here? And he says, oh, it's great. I love it up here. He says, but I, uh, I just have one question. And God says, yeah, uh, anything. Well, what would you like to know? And um, the guy says, well, you know, they said pray. You know, I know the Bible said pray, ask for help, and you would provide help. And I asked for help when I was drowning in the ocean. And, um, you know, uh, you never came. What, what's the deal there? And then God's reply is, what do you mean? I sent a lifesaver. I sent some other boats. I sent a helicopter. So the point is, God's miracles the miracles of the universe the answers to your prayers in other words can come in ways that you don't expect here's a video for another time but what you might think of as the devil may give you the answer to your prayers god may send you the answer through the devil yeah that's the answer that's a that's an issue for another time we'll we'll make a video about that for sure um God can give you the answer to your prayers through children. God can give you the answer to your prayers through, and I'm just using God because it's a quick way to say it's just shorter than saying the universe. All right, I'm not, I'm not talking about patriarchy or any of this kind of stuff. Um, whatever God is to you, because honestly, God doesn't care what you call it. God just cares that you quit murdering his children that you don't fight each other over what his name is. God thinks that's stupid. Um, and on this channel, God, this is turned out to be a really long video. On this channel, what you'll find is that I will share my personal opinions because everything on here is my personal opinion. And a year down the line, some of the stuff I said this year may be contradicted by stuff I'm saying next year because I may get new information. But at this point, everything you're hearing from me is what I honestly, truly believe at this point. Um, I'm not trying to get into any religious or political debate with people uh, on stuff. Uh, 
my opinion is my opinion your opinion is your opinion and if any of this resonates with you I hope you honor yourself by pulling it into yourself and making it a part of you and once again here's that word integrating it into your life so let's move on um, the last part of uh, curly doc no we did curly doc okay so the next herb is horsetail and I'm actually going to do a second video to follow that up um, love and blessings and join me in the the second video where we'll continue this information for the week <laughs>